now that we've introduced uh, in common uh, wealth heterogeneity in the matching model and that we've seen how matching works in such a world, um, we can look at the consumption uh, saving decision by heterogeneous households. So we want to see how households are going to, how much they are going to uh, choose to consume, how much they are going to choose to save when there is such heterogeneity. Uh, and from that, we'll be able to construct um, the aggregate demand curve in this uh, heterogeneous agent uh, matching model. So um, here, household I uh, will choose to consume CI services and holds MI uh, units of money. Uh, and so the question is, what is CI? What is MI? Um, and the household. So the, uh, the household in uh, making their decision is going to take market tightness X and uh, price, the price. Of, so here we keep on, we continue with our assumption that all services have the same price. Uh, P, which, you know, in the background, we know is given by a price norm. But this is taken as given uh, by the household. So um, what's the problem of the households? So household I is going to maximize utility. subject to a budget constraint. So as before, okay. So uh, basically the household is going to choose CI and MI to maximize the utility. The utility function is just the same as, as the one that we had assumed before. So it's going to be a weighted average of um, utility over consumption of services, CI, epsilon minus one over epsilon, where epsilon is going to govern the substitution between hold, uh, consuming services and holding uh, real wealth. And then the second part is utility over real wealth, which is here, the only way to hold wealth is to hold money. So it's money divided by the price level P. Epsilon, and you remember that epsilon strictly greater than one, that's a key assumption we had. Uh, and key is just greater than zero. Okay, um, subject to, um, so what's the budget constraint? So the budget constraint just says that what the household spend has to be, you know, cannot be greater than what the household uh, earns. And in fact, given that they are trying to maximize their utility, we know that that constraint is going to be binding. So what the household spend is going to be equal to what the household earns. So um, what's going to be the spending here? So first we have spending on uh, services. So CI services are bought, their price is P, but you know that here we still have this matching process uh, in the background. And so you know that to actually consume CI services, you have to buy more than that as there is a wedge between spending and consumption due to the fact that part of what you purchase are services to be able to actually make matches. They are services that you use uh, to do all the visits to the shop and be able to uh, buy services. And that wedge, we know that it's tau of x, which we have uh, computed before, which depends on tightness, because of course, when the market is tighter, uh, visits are less successful. And so you have to spend more to, ach you know, to achieve a certain amount of uh, consumption. And it also de depends, of course, on the cost uh, per visit. So P1 plus 2XCI, so this is the total amount of spending on services 
plus MI. Uh, of course, this is a total amount of money uh, that's going to be bought at the price of one because money is a numerator and that has to be equal to income. So income is KI, that's the total amount of services that are brought to the market, F of X, we saw that the probability that each service is sold. So FXK is the number of services that are sold, and they are all sold at the price P. In addition, there is an endowment of uh, money, initially endowment of wealth, which is mu I, which is maybe different for each household. And the KI that we have here is all different across households. So we have income inequality, mu I here, different across households, so we have wealth inequality as well. So that's our budget constraint. Um, so this is the household household's problem. So it's very similar to what we had before, except that we have this wealth inequality and income inequality. And as a result, the choices of all the households will be different. Okay, so uh, we can rewrite this uh, because we have a constraint that's um, just an equality. We can rewrite this problem as max over ci of 1 over 1 plus ki ci epsilon minus 1 over epsilon plus ki over 1 plus ki. And here we can just substitute, use the budget constraint to substitute that out mi. So we have pfx ki plus mu i minus p1 plus tau x. Ci epsilon minus one over epsilon, uh, and of course, so this is m. Oh, this is a bit. This is one plus tau x, uh, and of course, all of this has to be divided by p because m is divided by p. So basically, we can scratch out this p, we can scratch out this p, and then we'll just have uh, u i over p. All right, and here we recognize, uh, as we had argued before, not. This is exactly the same problem as in the case with um, homogeneous households. The only difference is that here we have a Ki here, um, and here we have a mu i. So the, you know the two parameters Ki and mu i may differ across households, but otherwise you have exactly the same problem. Um, and so as a result, you know as a result we know that this problem is a uh, concave maximization problem, so that's a problem that's very well behaved. We know that we can just look at the first order condition uh, of the household problems, and that's going to give us a necessary and sufficient condition to find the global uh, maximum of the household problem. Um, so that's very nice. So we can take the first order condition here, and in fact, it's exactly the same first order condition as. Um, in the case with homogeneous households, except that we have to just make sure that we use the, you know, in, you know, the endowment of wealth and uh, amount of services provided that are specific to household I. So we can do that. So if we take, uh, if we go back um, to the first order conditions that we had. Uh, in the case with the homogeneous household, at the end, what we get is that uh, we'll just get here that C i minus 1 over epsilon, so that's basically the marginal utility of consumption, is going to be equal to so we'll have a key here, and then we'll have a 1 plus tau x that will show up here, and then we'll have uh, All of this f of x k i plus mu i over p minus 1 plus tau x c i minus 1 over epsilon here. Actually, here I realize that um, I've inverted uh, the parameter um, key in the utility function is actually not where it was earlier. So let me just correct that so that our treatment of the heterogeneous agent and model and the homogeneous agent model are actually the same. So here, uh, let me make the correction. So what we had said is that key is actually, uh, uh, you know, it captures a preference for consumption 
over uh, real wealth at a hierarchy means that you tend to favor consumption over saving and hoarding real wealth. Um, so here I need to correct this. Right, so here I also need to get rid of this uh, key here. So here we have a one and here we have a key. And as a result, um, here the key will go in the denominator here. Okay, so now we are back to uh, where we were with the same functional form. So it's gonna make it uh, it's gonna make it easier. Um, okay, so here uh, we have our first order condition, uh, which gives us, you know, as a function of tightness, which is taken as given, and the endowment of uh, wealth and services, uh, the amount of consumption that the household will choose, and then to make a bit of progress and uh, actually understand analytically what's going on, so what we can do we can uh, multiply both sides of the first order co condition by minus epsilon and so that will allow us to make some progress here so here i'm gonna have ci once i multiply by minus epsilon here i multiply this uh, term in front of the square bracket by minus epsilon so i can invert the fraction get key one plus tau x and that's just going to be epsilon and then everything in the square bracket, uh, if you put it the power of minus epsilon, it's gonna disappear. And so here we just get f of x ki minus mu i over p, the endowment of real wells minus one plus tau x ci. Okay, and here uh, what we can do is that we can bring uh, the term with ci, which is on the right hand side, bring it to the left hand side so that we have everything in ci. So here, what if I do that, I'll get one and then I get a key. Uh, so here I'll have a plus key, which we have an epsilon, then I have one plus tau x which will have a one minus epsilon times ci. So all of these second terms that we have here, of course, that's, all, that's everything that comes from here, this. Uh, with key epsilon, one plus tau x, so minus becomes plus. Right, so here we're good. Uh, and this is going to be equal to key epsilon one plus tau x minus epsilon and then every, and then f of x okay i plus mu i over p okay and then if i want to get ci which is consumption uh, you know uh, choice of consumption by the by household high it's going to be the we can simplify a bit so it's going to be key epsilon one plus tau x minus epsilon and i divide everything by one plus key epsilon one plus tau x one minus epsilon times uh, basically the real uh, so this is the income plus the endowment of wealth. So it's total amount of um, it's income plus plus real wealth. So it's you know it's a total amount of uh, real wealth that's available to the household before uh, any spending has occurred, um, which comes from the initial wealth plus the income that's accumulated. So this is a total real wealth before spending, which is the endowment of real wealth plus income. And then this thing here uh, is this is uh, between, the, so of course it's positive 
but it's uh, strictly less than one because the um, denominator is strictly greater than the numerator. Um, so basically, it said, this is just saying that the household is going to consume a share of the total real wealth that's available uh, to spend. Now that we have the amount that household I is going to consume, amount of services that the household is going to consume, we can compute the number of services that the household will actually purchase. Um, so that's why I. Uh, and the reason why that's easy is that why I uh, is just one plus tau x CI, because we know that the number of um, services to be purchased is just the amount of services to be consumed. Plus, for each service to be consumed, you have to also purchase tau x service that will be used for matching. So, 1 plus tau x CI is that uh, the amount of services that will be purchased by household I. And then <clears throat> what we can do is use the result that we have above for what CI is. Once we multiply that by tau x, actually, it's even simpler than the expression for CI. We'll get chi epsilon, 1 plus tau x, 1 minus epsilon, because we multiply the thing above by 1 plus tau x. So the numerator is exactly the same. It's just 1 plus chi epsilon, 1 plus tau x, 1 minus epsilon. And all of this is multiplied by the initial wealth is real income plus end of month of real wealth. So this is going to be uh, yi. Um, what's quite nice, actually, the reason why I said this expression was simpler is that here you notice uh, the fraction in, in front of the real wealth has a little bit of a simpler expression. And you can see it's basically it has the form some scalar divided by one plus the scalar, <coughs> where the scalar is positive. So this thing, um, this is uh, clearly between zero and one. And in fact, you know, we could give it a name just to simplify. We could call it sigma because it's a share between zero and one. Of course, the key thing is that it depends on tightness. So you can call this sigma x between zero and one. Uh, so that's very nice. Uh, and then here we have if you want uh, initial real wealth that is uh, before any spending. So basically the total amount of initial real wealth that the household has, the household is going to take a share of that, that depends on tightness and allocate it to uh, buying services. So we can rewrite this as yi is just sigma x. Where we define uh, where we define sigma x as above. That's a particularly simple expression, and then uh, <coughs> then we can also, of course, back out uh, the amount of uh, money that the household is going to hold. Uh, that's pretty easy. So mi, we know that it's, uh, we know that in fact real money holding by the household it's f x k i plus mu i or p minus <coughs> one plus tau x c i. We know that through the budget constraint. You know that's what we had used above. If we go up, right. So here you can see that's uh, what we have from this. From so that's pretty easy, but then of course 1 plus tau x ci is this thing here, that's just yi. Just the amount of purchases by the household. And so given that yi is equal to sigma x times f of x ki plus mu i p, Uh, 
then we get that mi over p real money holdings is just going to be 1 minus sigma x times f of x ki minus mu ip. So this is very pretty simple. You have an initial amount of real wealth and a fraction uh, sigma x would be uh, would be allocated to spending on services and a fraction one minus sigma x is going to be allocated uh, to uh, real money holdings or real wealth basically. So uh, if you want to summarize, you have, I guess you could say you have your endowment of real wealth and then you have real income and these two things will be allocated a fraction sigma x will be allocated to services and a fraction one minus sigma x will be allocated to real wealth so that's pretty uh, that's pretty simple okay uh, so this is the, how the household behave in this model with um, heterogeneous uh, agent. And given the simple functional form that we simple functional form assumption we have, um, this is going to be uh, the you know all the decisions that the household makes. Oh, one last decision that we can flag here uh, is the number of visits. How many visits is the household going to do? Well, that's uh, again very easy. Number of visits vi the households want to purchase yi services and we know that each visit has a uh, probability of being successful qx so to make sure that you get these yi services the household is going to do yi over qx uh, visits so the household can immediately compute how many of these visits going to do where yi is given by this expression here which also depend on x um, so you know if you want an actual expression it's going to be sigma x over qx f of x ki plus mu ip which depends only on aggregate variables which are taken as given uh, and uh, the parameters uh, so here x and p and the parameters of the model and so here we really have all the decisions that the households make given that he knows the price price of all services of prisoners and he also knows uh, the market tightness.